Greetings, bike guys and bike gals. I have today a review on the Riehu MR300 Pro, and this is after 500 miles on the bike. So here we go. I'm out on an early morning ride and uh, I was thinking I need to give a review on the Riehu. We've done a couple of videos with me riding the Riehu and that and talking about it. There's, if you look uh, on past, on the past um, videos, you can find a walk around on the bike, shows all the features and stuff like that. But I wanted to talk about the bike itself after I've ridden it for 500 miles. And uh, here I'm going down this trail and I'm looking for a single track. There it is. Okay, so um, as far as the 500 mile review goes, I'll tell you what, boys and girls, I am impressed with this bike. Not only does it handle exceptionally well, and with the KYB suspension front and rear with a few clicker adjustments, and setting up the spring and that sort of thing um, to the to the right ride height, man. Uh, this bike handles. It just handles nice, and I'm really impressed with how you can flick it around, how you can move it. Um, it doesn't put you in a compromising position. It just stays neutral all the time, so it's never doing anything weird. Um, I've ridden some other bikes that are kind of edgy. And boy, if you overcorrect something or that, you're off in the brush. Now I'm probably going to run off into the brush here in a minute, but uh, there we go. Anyway, uh, that wasn't the bike's problem. That was a loose nut on the handlebars. That nut being me. Um, anyway, so I wanted to talk about some of the other components and how they work. The bike has Nissan brakes on it. So those are just outstanding right from the start. Um, they do a great job as uh, stopping the bike. Uh, they have good feel to them so when you're coming down a rocky hill or something like that the Nissan brakes are easy to modulate. Now one finger on the front brake lever gives you plenty of power up there and just a light touch with the toe gives you plenty of power in the back and uh, so we got uh, the motor. I want to talk about the motor. This motor this engine in this bike is really amazing to me because I've owned a lot of bikes in my days and I've had a bunch of two strokes and um, I'm just really amazed here that loose nut ran off the trail again got him stuck in a wash but here's the deal on that motor it has a really wide power band for a two stroke just in the design of the engine, uh, the weight of the crank and the flywheel and all that stuff, it doesn't spin out when you're going up hills, coming out of turns and stuff like that. It hooks up to the rear wheel really well, so you have traction right out of the hole. The control via the throttle is really amazing. So what ends up happening is I short shift this bike all the time. It makes so much torque. There's no reason to really spin the motor up. Now, obviously you come out onto a fast trail or a fast road or whatever and let it spin up. That dude will really take off. Um, they rate it at 54 horsepower. So that's quite a bit of acceleration. But what I like to do is run at a gear high and let the motor kind of pull me along and it keeps the traction uh, tight so that you're not spinning the tire and stuff like that and it just you can carry speed that will amaze you. Um, I've been just really really pleased with the way this bike works. Um, the clutch control works really well so when you get up in those rocky sections and you need to use the clutch to move around things it's really easy to get it in the sweet spot that you want. The uh, handlebars, the, the Pro comes with a uh, twin wall Renthal bar, um, which is a great shape, good, good design there. It has an odometer on the front of the handlebar there, and it just tells you the basic information. 
So uh, as we head out here some more, I'm going to give you a little bit of a chance to listen to the motor run. Hopefully uh, my editor will be able to put the sound into it. it they come, the bike runs um, really quiet. The exhaust system is not loud. The uh, intake system is not loud. So it's, it's a quiet bike to ride. And I'll tell you, I find that refreshing. Um, I've had the big loud four strokes and all of that stuff, and they're fun to listen to for a while, but after a couple of hours, it starts wearing on you. But the motor's really quiet in the way it works. I found the chassis is really smooth. So as you're going along, it's, there's nothing clunking or banging or, or uh, I don't even get any chain slap out of the thing. It's just really amazing. Now I've changed tires a couple of times looking for the right combination that'll work in our area because we ride everything from soft sand to hard rocky gnarly uh, hard enduro type stuff most of the time I'm just putting these trails on like here in these uh, trees this ground's a lot harder than what I was riding earlier in the open desert so you need a tire that's going to work for both of them and um, I've tried different combinations. Um, I tried a uh, soft um, cheater tire on the back for the in-between tire and that one worked really well but I used it up pretty quick. Um, and then the stock tires that come on it from stock, the, the Michelin's, the uh, 140 in the back and that um, I'm not a big fan of that tire. I've had it on several bikes. Um, I'm just not a big fan of it. Some guys love it. It just doesn't suit my kind of riding or whatever like that. I like a smaller rear tire. I run a, a 110, 100, uh, 18 on the back, and I do that on purpose. They have big enough knobs um, compared to like a 120 or a 140. Um, but what I like is I can move that back end around a little bit more the way I want to. It turns. It seems like it holds the the edges of ruts and things like that better. So I, I try different tires, but I've found everything on the bike just outstandingly well. It's got really heavy duty wheels. Uh, the spokes have stayed tight. I went through and tightened them up one time in 500 miles and everything was good there's just a slight adjustment on a few spokes um, the nuts and the bolts and all that stuff they stay right where they're placed uh, i've lost two bolts on the bike one of them was a small bolt holding the rear fender protector on and then i did lose that one that carries the uh, the chain guide on the by the counter shaft sprocket but that could have been, I just didn't tighten it up when I did some work. Um, I've left this bike basically stock, and I put on an SXS skid plate on my bike for a little additional protection. But basically, my bike is stock. Um, and so I found it to uh, just work doing everything, whether it's fast in the desert or fast sand washes, or these kind of mountain trails. Yeah, that thing just works nice. So if you have questions about the uh, the bike, just give me a, send me a message or, or um, make a comment down below. That's probably the best way is make a comment. And uh, if you got questions about it, then I'll try to answer those questions for you. Um, and that so uh we do appreciate you guys who subscribe and the, you guys use the notification and that sort of thing we try to put out a video about every week or week and a half so stick around subscribe be part of the bike guys off-road family and thanks again there's a little more video to go here so hang in there